right, seven minutes after nine o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Friday morning. Jim George is in the studio to talk to us about our favorite thing, which is electronic gadgets and and the the things we watch on them. And, and even this week, something new was introduced by Amazon, and it looks. Uh, I, I think I don't know if it lived up to the hype or not, uh, but it's but it's now out there. I think it's called the Kindle. Hold on, I'll tell you what it's called. The Fire. Uh, what's it called? The Fire. I think it's the Fire. The Fire. And what was the other one called? The Kindle. Oh, the, gee, well, there's too many of them. There's too many of them. In, uh, Amazon Fire Phone. It's the Amazon Fire Phone. Is that what they're calling it? Fire Phone. Yeah, I wish yeah. mine would catch on fire. <laughs> uh, if you have a question for Jim, during the course of this program, the number is 622-9622. That is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline. Jim George, of course, from American Cable Services. So yeah. so how was your thing last week? How did your, Where did you go again? I went to Tampa for six-day schooling. Um, very intense. As a matter of fact, day four, I wanted to drop out. I even told my wife, I may not go back to Oh, Tampa. really? Uh, it's too intense. The things you have to know in today's electronic age is unbelievable. Really? And without certification, you're just one of the faces in the crowd. I mean, you may be able to do the work, and you may be able to believe you're doing it the proper way. But even on bonding and grounding, something as simple as bonding two pieces of equipment together right. and, and grounding them to the electrical has changed in the NEC, National Electrical Code. And uh, when I went yesterday to the electronic wholesale house and asked them, did they have any irreversible ground clamps? They didn't even know what they were. <laughs> just, to, just to tell you that. that so you that's could how, teach them something. The state of the art is just changing so much. But if you're going to pass code, if you're going to be up to date on all the, all the latest wiring techniques and everything, you have to know. And bonding and grounding for Central Florida, as you know, is unbelievably important. Yeah, very important, yeah. Very important. I mean, you could yeah. lose everything in one lightning strike. One strike. And as a matter of fact, I, a friend of mine asked me to come over to his house. Uh, last week, the week before last, no, on Monday, excuse me, it's this Monday because I'm back this week, and look at his uh, his house. He said he had a lightning strike. He lost his re washer and dryer. Oh, wow. He lost his refrigerator, and he lost his air conditioner. And I went over, and after checking everything out, he has no neutral in his house. So the lightning took his neutral out. Well, the neutral bonds to the ground. So in uh -huh. other words, now he has no ground. So because he has no ground, he can get shocked by touching two different things. So like if, if he was touching the refrigerator and touching the wall, that was a metal. He could get shocked because now he's... Bad shock? Like dead? Well, the, the, the wonderful thing about 110 volts yeah. is it, it doesn't want to kill you. It doesn't want to. Okay. It wants to hurt you. Okay, okay. So it literally picks you up and throws you away from it. But as you get to 250... 20 and 240 and 480 up around the 400 right then right. you can't let go of it your muscles so contract oh. that that that's why people get killed but 110 volts if you were to just take it yourself and plug in and uh i'm not suggesting this <laughs> this should not be done at home <laughs> but if you were to touch 110 volts it would just really shock you and throw you away from it it would it wow. would it would make your muscles Uncontract. Do you know, I remember as a kid, like some of his metal casing uh, fans. Do you remember some of those fans? Yeah, for yeah. some reason, they were notorious for for being uh, set up so that you could get shocked. Right. Not in purpose, I guess. But well, I got a new cell phone, and uh, we switched from T-Mobile to Verizon. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but it's just at my house. AT and T doesn't work. Uh -huh. T-Mobile doesn't work. Sprint doesn't work, and Verizon does, so I got me a new Verizon phone, and for three days, people have been calling. I didn't even know how to answer it. That's how new, <laughs> I mean, these phones are incredible, mm -hmm. and now I have to learn how to save. A, a, everything is new. Every phone you go to, it's a different way to answer, a different way to save a message, different right. way to add a contact. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend all weekend literally reading that book and learning how to use my <laughs> new cell phone. We, and we have a, a new phone all call, right. so let's take that call. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim George. Hey, good morning, Jim. Yes. I, I, I just wanted to find out if I want to get a modem and <clears throat> to get the internet uh, off of um, uh, another Wi-Fi. Well, basically, you cannot have two routers in in a string. So, the you'd have a master, and then you'd have to have a switch of some sort after that. So, um, and it really depends on the actual circumstance. Sometimes you can do a few things with equipment that's not made to do that. 
But in, in reality, no, you could not have two master devices in a row. Well, uh, uh, actually, the thing was, um, uh, I'm picking back uh, off of um, uh, uh, my friend right, right now. And um, that's the reason why I asked. Yes. Well, you, you just cont if you want to do hard wire, in other words, if, he, if you're picking up hard wire from him and you want to have wireless, the answer is yes. But if you're picking up wireless from him and you want to, like, rebroadcast wireless, the, the basic answer is no, but it can be done, but it has to be done by a professional that, that knows how to change um, the frequencies on each wireless so they don't conflict. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Okay, bye. By the, by the way, uh, Robin's husband has a new phone also. Oh. And um, he bought a camera for the living room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and anywhere he is now, he can look at the living room. Yes. To make sure nobody's right. there that shouldn't be there or something like that. Right. Yeah. My d youngest daughter had a break in a while back when she was staying at somebody else's house. And uh, so I put her in a, uh, an alarm system that has two cameras. Wow. One in the garage area. So when the, when the door is up, she can see all the way out, you know, into the street. Uh -huh. And then one in her living room area. So um, every time you enter the code and whatever, it sends you a little email or a text message and says, um, you know, so and so left, put put the alarm on because she has a boyfriend and, and my middle daughter, Melissa, stays with her. So to make a long story short, everybody has their own code, but it also will give you a link at that moment and you hit it and there's the camera. Oh wow! Wow! Uh, you get to see who came in your house. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Can can you hook that up to your system then your cable system the well picture it, the camera can you hook it all up uh, yes i i could do that but in in the case where you have an individual home you don't want anybody else to see your home so it's a mm -hmm. password type protected and the reason why it gets sent to your cell phone or your email is because you've already done that link you've already accomplished that uh -huh. so now it, it just it knows you and recognizes you and to show you so if if right now if, if you've got a text on your phone it would say um, whatever your daughter, whoever's at home, they entered the alarm and entered the house. And you go, uh, wait a minute, now school's on right now, it's summertime, but you say, oh, they're not supposed to be there. Now you know they missed the bus. Ah, oh, yeah. okay. They, and then you can see if they brought friends home. Oh. Because you have a camera in the living room. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. You know? it's, it's, and the cameras are cheap. The cam uh, by uh -huh. cheap, I mean under $100, maybe $70 for a camera. Oh, how much oh, did Ronnie pay for that one? Do you know? Uh, it was I, I'm not sure. I, I don't really know. Where did he get it? Can no, you say where it. he got it? From? He um, at the uh, Sprint. Oh, at the, store, at the right Sprint here store. on okay. Easy Street. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and you have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim George. Oh, good morning, Mr. George. <clears throat> Starting calling. The uh, measuring or looking for a ground, especially here in Florida, since most of it is all sand. Uh, is very uh, tricky, and uh, you can tell when you uh, have a poor ground by when uh, you I would have a light on and say your refrigerator or the hot water heater would kick in because uh, it would see your lights either get bright or get dim. And when that happens at more or less the same time as you're sitting there, you better... Somehow the other figure out if your ground is uh, connected well or the connections haven't become loose for some reason. This stuff happens every once in a while uh, over time, where you can have to go back and just retighting retightening the the connections. But you have to be super careful with that, simply because uh, even though it might be a 110 uh, circuit breaker, if you touch the wrong thing you could probably get a 220 blast out of that yeah you could get hurt yes yeah well the thing with the the uh, ground is uh, it's basically a eight or eight foot grounding rod they put in and it's not i don't think it's sufficient well there are all kind of methods with, to, to with cure the sand, that if you have a long dry spell the moisture is taken out of the sand because all the water just goes down into the aquifer mm-hmm and your sand is basically glass. Yes. And and there is very, you know, that rod could be insulated, basically, or, uh, you know, it's not going to uh, 
register properly with a volt ohm meter. Right, they have to have a thing, device called a Megger. And the Megger. Right. Well, me I, I used to work for a utility, and we used uh, oscilloscopes to measure lengths of cable, especially if there was no T's on it. Yes. And uh, we could measure the distance, and then sometimes you could actually look for a fault. And that would be where you, know, the, uh, uh, you would get an up spike or a down spike. The up spike was usually indicating an open, and the down was uh, where it was going to ground. And I remember one time we shot the uh, fault, and uh, we had a ground on at one end for protection, and we were getting footage readings that were off the wall. We had uh, one incident where, you know, you go and you say, this is the ground. It should be ground. Well, it showed 300 more feet before it went to infinity. So uh, we lifted the ground, and lo and behold, we were able to go directly to the fault, and we shot it from uh, both ends. Right. But it had to be on an open circuit. No, right. not live, but open. Right. So uh, grounds are extremely important, and uh, if they're not installed properly, you could have, uh, a, at the worst case scenario, like you said, of possibly getting a bad shock or even possibly a fire, and your stuff being cooked, like your refrigerator or right. whatever. But uh, this is experience talking, not uh, knowledge. I've had the experience of uh, going through this stuff. So, anyway, that's my two cents. Have a great weekend. Thanks thank you. For the, your program, and thank you, WOCA. And thank you. Yeah. Uh, let me just uh, interject the phone number if you want to call Jim. The number is 622-WOCA. Did you want to comment on that? Well, I was just thinking, you know, um, at the uh, school, one of the things they mentioned was, Maybe what electrical contractors need to do, and, and I do have a, a statewide unlimited electrical contractor's license, is to um, send out flyers saying, you know, for a flat fee, let's say it's $50. I don't even know what the fee would be. We would check your ground rod to make sure it's adequate. We would test it with a megger, and then we would tighten up all of your um, breakers. What what he is speaking about, Sonny, is that when trucks go by the road, you don't even probably feel a vibration. If mm. you do, you're really in trouble. Yeah. But if you feel the vibration, and sometimes you can on a heavy truck, the screws that are tightened onto your breakers, they, uh -huh. come, they come loose. Oh. And at this guy's house, for instance, when I went to his house, and I put the screwdriver on every one of the breakers, I could get almost an eighth turn on, oh, wow. on a screw. That's how loose they were. And his ground, his neutrals, his white and his gra the white wires and the bare wires, they were loose. So what Sonny is saying is if you don't have an adequate ground, some of the lights in your house would be very dim. And other lights in your house would be very bright. Because the oh. dim ones are getting like 90 volts now instead of 120. Okay, okay. And the real bright ones are getting like 160 volts. <laughs> ah, okay. So basically, okay. if you can put up your three fingers, the center is the neutral, and then you have 110 on each side. And if you lose your neutral, not, not quite good enough ground, the voltage is, is still there. It's going to swing to the other side. Oh, okay, okay. And that's how you come. You burn a refrigerator out, an air conditioner out, because oh, you're okay. ground. That makes sense. So yeah. it's really good to test the ground. And, and you can get shocked, but if you can just get an insulated screwdriver, pull your panel cover off. I'm not suggesting everybody do that. But if, if they're nervous about it, they can have someone do it. But you can get a couple of, you know, if you can get a turn on those screws, that will actually save your electric bill. Because, oh, my gosh. Because the, it's oh, not wow. making a good contact, so the voltage is trying to jump across wow. instead of being, you know, hard contact. Wow, I never knew that. And yeah. you have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim George. Oh, good morning, everybody. I have a question while you were talking about the grounds. I tried to, uh, at the Home Depot, buy a, uh, the grounding rod, the Yes. Uh, the the, uh, the piece of metal that goes on top of your roof, buy a kit for that. Uh, they said they didn't sell it. Is that something that you, you you can buy somewhere if you wanted to install it yourself? Yes, you can go online. You can find, a, you, it's usually an electrical wholesale house like Rexall Electric, City Electric, Graybar Electric, Hughes Supply Electric, Raybro Electric. There's a Marion Electric. I hope I covered them all so no one feels I'm leaving anybody out. 
but uh, you can go in there and tell them what you want. You want an eight foot ground rod and you want uh, the cable that goes up to the house with the little peak uh, device that will bleed off lightning. And they'll know exactly what you want and they'll show you in the book and they'll ask you how big your house is and do you want to protect all four corners and things like that. And they do work. Um, in Ocala Palms, for instance, we'll see a house that has four and five of those uh, one foot little spikes on their house and the house right next to it got hit by lightning and burned to the ground. Oh, wow. So they do work. The little points, what it does, it dissipates lightning to the ground before it has a chance to build up. Okay. Well, that's some good information. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, have a good day. Thank you. Good call. Is, is, is there more than one ground? No, there's only... Well, you can have multiple grounds, but it's not suggested. You really want one good ground. And that one good ground is usually always supplied by the electric company. So Seco Electric, Tico Electric, Ocala Electric, that's the, that's the main ground. And everybody's supposed to tie to that ground. Oh. And there's methodology in doing it. So if you're like more than 20 feet away from that ground, then you should sink your own ground, but then connect to that ground so that you have your ground, but it's connected. You don't want two grounds or three grounds that are not connected. They have to be bonded together. So if you can picture, that's the difference between grounding and bonding. Grounding is where you go to ground and bonding is where you connect all the grounds together. Oh, my gosh. So you have one ground. Okay, and you have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim George. Yes, uh, good morning, Mr. George. Now, this, the subject that you're on, now, is, does that have anything to do with surge protection? Uh well, a surge protector won't work adequately if you don't have a good ground. But no, there are two different things. A surge protector, there's, two, there's m multiple types, but one is a, a primary surge protector, which protects the whole house and is usually outside the house. And then there's a secondary surge protector, and that's the, the little devices you can buy that go behind your computer or go behind your refrigerator. Uh, the code calls for a primary surge protector. They're not very expensive. You can probably even put them in yourself. They're probably about $200. Uh, but they make a whole house one. As a matter of fact, the electric company will put one in for you free. And then I think they charge you like $4 a month on your bill. And that protects oh. your whole house. Now, can you have one put in where there's no fee? I mean, you yes. want it? Right. You can go to uh, even Lowe's and buy one. Would, it, would you recommend having that professionally uh, set up or... Uh, if you're a little reluctant to do it, rather than, I mean, would it be smart to have somebody that knows what they're doing set it up? Yeah, it would be because while he's there, he's going to check your ground. He's going to check your neutral. He's going to check all your lug nuts to make sure they're all tight on your um, on your fuse panel box and everything. So uh, he's not just going to install this and he'll walk in because he can install it in literally 10 minutes and be done. And that would yeah, be let, and let's assume that's sixty five dollars. We'll just throw a fee out there. Well, while he's yeah. there, he checks everything. So what do you do? Just call your 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 local electrician. Yes, just tell him you'd like to have a whole house surge protector. Okay, we'll do. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey, and you have another phone call. Uh, good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air with Jim George. Uh, good morning. This is Sonny again. Uh, <coughs> one of the things you can do if you're looking to do it yourself. Uh, they tighten the connectors, that is. Uh, open your main circuit breaker. And one of the best testers I've ever had was a little neon. And one leg would go to ground, the other would go to the circuit. And usually, that uh, I use the neon even on my car to verify. Uh, well, the uh, spark plug wires were, you know, there were no opens in spark plug wires. So, I mean, that's a very handy little tool because uh, it'll light up if, there's a, uh, if you have a completer circuit. But, uh, again, you can open up your circuit breaker, the main circuit breaker, and uh, then you could uh, tighten all the other screws on the other breakers. And then you have to, you know, you restore your electricity by closing the breaker. Uh, the biggest hassle with that is you probably have to go in there and reset all the clocks and reset this and whatever else. Like, you know, maybe your thermostat. Hopefully your thermostat has a battery backup. But uh, And another thing, a lot of, a lot of outfits or people will tell uh, you can use rebar. 
don't use rebar. Your grounding rod is designed to be anti-corrosive. A rebar isn't. Rebar will, uh, will uh, rust up, and once that rust takes hold, there goes your ground connection. Thank you. All right. Well, you got a lot of calls today, Jim. we got another one. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim George. Uh, say, I want to know one thing. What about aluminum uh, that's uh, on the house, on the walls, all the way around the uh, edging, and also the drain pipes, and they go down and ground? Does that have any effect with the, with the aluminum carry the lightning? Well, it's it's not really going to ground. It may be sitting on the ground. It may even be maybe an inch or two buried no, in the no, ground. I, no, I mean if you ground it. No, sir. If that you ground it. that uh, it doesn't have a good connectivity. In other words, it's pushed. It's I, painted, and then it's uh, had, you know shoved I into itself. TV, uh, radio. Oh, go ahead. Yes, uh, the the I, the most the gutters I, are usually painted. The downspouts yeah. are painted, and they're pushed together. Um, and they may have a screw to keep it from falling out, but that's not a connectivity. Uh, what you would need to do is put these little ground spikes on your house. Uh, they, they mount very easy. You could do glue. You don't necessarily need to put a screw in your roof. And uh, bring the wire to ground, and you'll protect your house. Yeah, but, but aluminum, if it's grounded, would help. It would help, but uh, it would not be necessarily be grounded. The, uh, all that stuff, is it may be touching each other, but it's not bonded. The reason I ask that is one, down to late years ago when I was a young man and mature a little, and lightning come down, and I had an arrow up on top of a pine. I cried and crawled way up on the pine put the arrow up there. Well, lightning come down and hit it, and I had a metal fence down between our properties, and that uh, blue, what kind of a blue color, went up and down that wire like mad and <laughs> went over and burnt the other guy's TV out, but it didn't hurt mine. I'm sitting there looking at it. <laughs> no, man. No. Uh, that happens sometimes. Things you can't trust light. Burn down. No. All right. Thank you for the calls. We are right up against the clock, Jim. How do we get a hold of you? It sounds like you got a lot of people wanting some questions answered. Certainly. My number is 854 9795. All right. Call Jim if you have any questions. I uh, wish we had more time so you could get the calls in. You you are busy today. All right. We will take a little break. Thank you, Jim. Have a great weekend. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. This is Wendy and Will of Dex Imaging. By now, you might be tired of hearing us talk about Dex. So instead of us telling you how much Dex can save you on your copier costs and how we can help your office be more efficient, we thought we'd let Judy tell you. Hi, I'm Judy, the office manager of Graper Facial Institute here in Gainesville. We operate eight medical offices, so I was looking for a document management system that would copy, scan, print, and share documents among all of our locations, but something that was within our budget. Dex Imaging recommended a Kyocera with their index solution. It's been amazing. This machine does everything we need it to, including a direct scan into our current electronic medical record software. Dex even trained us on how to use it. Dex has been a tremendous help in making our practice and my job more efficient. Thanks, Judy. And remember, call Dex Imaging today for a free workflow analysis to find out how you can save 20 to 30 percent on your copying and document management needs, just like Great for Facial Institute. Dex Imaging, 352-224-1816. That's 224-1816. Hi, Robin. You look tired. I am. I've been running all over town. Why? Why not drive? I need to get this stupid document notarized. Well, that's easy. You need personal service. Duh. That's what I've been looking for. You need to go see Mark at the Personal Service Center. He can notarize that for you, make copies, fax it wherever, or send it out in the mail. Heck, he can even scan it and email it for you. Really? Where is he at? 2375 Northeast 25th Avenue, on the corner of Northeast 25th Avenue and 24th Street. You can call him at 789 66